the way that I have learned to get things done is to help other people learn how to get things done that I want to get done. <laughs> so I am probably what you would call a, a quiet advocate behind the scenes. Humans are just sort of scared of the other unless you really kind of really are very intentional about that and unfortunately the people you're going to encounter may be very blind to their own biases as they evaluate you, as they give you feedback or don't. The greatest thing you all bring as a leader is to bring each other into the fold. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., his wife, Coretta Scott King, and her, her daughter spoke at one of our events, Bernice King, Dr. King, about a quote from her mother, and I say this all the time, for the soul of a nation to change, it will require its women. Because your soul and your heart as a woman is our greatest gift. And men, it's not defaming, this isn't putting that down, but you have a gift to change the world. And so ensure that through unconscious bias, you recognize the other people that have had a hard time getting to, to where you are, and that you're always including them. We should not approach an idea of life of scarcity. There's jobs for everybody. There is room for all of us. Surround yourself with people that lift you up. I personally uh, have lived the imposter syndrome for the majority of my career. It's only been in the last um, two years that I've publicly shared my story um, because I was afraid, right? I was, I was pretending. I lived by the mantra of I was going to fake it until I made it, right? And so, so we do this because we don't have confidence and because we don't believe in ourselves. One thing I will tell you that women do this all the time and it's foster syndrome, there will be a job that is open and I will have a guy walk into my office and go, I want this job. I'll have three guys walk in my, I want this job. Here's why I'm going to be great. Here's why I'm amazing. And they are 60% qualified for that job. I will have a woman who's 80 or 90% qualified for that job and she will not walk into my office. She will not come ask me for that role. Any other advice that you would give us? Probably my greatest lesson in the last decade has been the importance of self-care. It's really easy to be a workaholic, yeah. and it takes time, effort, and discipline to create that balance and to focus on yourself and to learn how to enjoy the complete of life. Being in a leadership position like you ladies are, you guys talked about hitting rock bottom. How many times did you guys lose faith in yourself, and what have you done to overcome that? If you're listening to that negative conversation go on in your head, then you only have so much space, right? Then, then you can't be this because you have this narrative running of all of the negative self-talk. Imagine if we all did that. We just don't let stuff in. You know, somehow, it, because it, it conflicts when we hear a positive thing with all the negative that, that we've told ourselves. So really listen and take that in and just notice yourself how you reject the good and you like live in the, the negative and kind of start to shift that balance. And let's do that all as women with each other. I challenge you, make the list of the good, bad, and the ugly and start walking through. Do you forgive yourself? Whether it's a first leadership position or a next leadership position, Make sure it's something that you really want. Can I just say, as soon as you can, get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guys, when you, get, when you get home at night, the dog absolutely doesn't care what kind of dog you have. And so that's my best recommendation. <laughs> we should end on that.